In this video, I want to show you how you can calculate moving averages in Power BI using the dates in period DAX function. We're going to go through it step by step with an example so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into this scenario that I prepared for you today that will give you a better context of when you could use the dates in period DAX function. So here we have a Power BI report that has two tables. We have the views table here, which gives us the total number of views for, let's say, a YouTube channel. And every day it gives us a total number of views. And this is for a couple of years, I think 2020 and 2021. Uh, it's just some fake numbers that I got on the internet. And we also have created a calendar table, which is what we're going to use for our time intelligence calculations. So all it has is uh, some basic columns, like obviously the date, the years, month and day, and also year month, which we're all going to use uh, for our demo today. If we look at the relationship here, we've just created a one to many relationship between the calendar and the views table. Um, and that's how you would normally create the relationship. So you can use the calendar table to filter your views table. So why don't we go to the report view now and let's try to visualize the year month and the total views in these months. So if we just drag the total views there, so you'll see now this table gives us a sum our summary of the total views for those months in those years. So let's say we were given a task to visualize the total views for every single month in this list, except that for each of those months, we want to calculate the last three months uh, from those dates. So for example, we are in March 2020. What we want to have is another column that sums up the total views, not just for March, but for February and January as well. So you would have this number 57223 plus this number plus this number and we would have the total down here and not just for this March 2020 obviously but we want this applied for all of the uh, dates within our table here. To do that we're going to use the dates in period DAX function. So let's have a look at what it does in the documentation itself. So here is the documentation for the dates in period. So here it says it returns a table that contains a column of dates that begins with a specified start date and continues for the specified number and type of date intervals. Uh, so it's saying that uh, obviously this is something that you will use uh, for the calculate function, which is what we'll use. But I want to just give you a context of why we're using it in the first place. So the syntax is pretty simple. It needs four different parameters. It needs the dates, uh, date column. Uh, we need a start date, so where you want your dates in period to start from. The number of intervals, uh, so this is how many uh, months you want to go forward or back, and then the interval that you want. Uh, so if you want to do, let's say, three months before, six months before, you can choose the intervals here. And I already mentioned before, but it returns a table. So in fact, what we can do is we can actually visualize this by creating a DAX table first, just to show you what it does. So let's go back to our Power BI uh, report here. We're going to go to the uh, table view. We're going to create a new table. I'm going to name this one dates in period. So now we're going to type dates in period, which is the function that we want to use. And you'll see, well, it doesn't show here, but it shows you four or asks for four parameters. So first is the dates, which is we know will be the dates table, uh, the dates column from the calendar table. The start date at the moment, we're going to use max. So we want to start from the highest 
um, dates or the latest dates in our calendar table and you'll see why we're doing this in the first place so we're gonna just do calendar max calendar which is gonna be our start date and here we specify how far back we want to go to uh, so let's say we're gonna do minus three and we want to go back three months uh, from the maximum calendar date so if you click enter you will see it creates a single column table uh, which is just the date and you will see here um, although it goes through 2026 so if you look 2026 first of 2026 and then you will see here uh, november to january 2026 so what it's done is it's gone to our calendar table and what it's done is it's went, it's gone to the very top. So we specified we want to go or start from the top uh, dates from our calendar, which is the latest date, it's, it's the 2026. So if we just go back here and uh, just to verify it, you'll see this is the latest date that we have in our calendar, January 1st, 2026. And it said from 2026, give me three months from that date. And that's why we have the three months from the January all the way back to November, 2025. So in essence, that's what the dates in period do. You essentially specify the start dates and you specify how much you want from that uh, date table. And it just returns you those lists of dates which at the moment is a bit nonsensical. However, the magic comes with the max part of our parameter here. Now, without any context at all and just generating this uh, DAX table, it just takes the latest date from our calendar. However, when we use this same code and put it in a table context, the start date, the max date, becomes the last date of the rows date. So this means that um, you can use this as part of our calculate function for our specific purpose. So uh, let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm gonna copy the max calendar date, which as we mentioned the in our current context is the first of 2026, right? If I create a new measure here now, for example, I'll just create max date here and I say, Give me the max for the calendar. Uh, if we just put it by itself, you will see that it still gives us 2026, 1st of January, which is fine. However, if you put it in a table context, you'll see that it's different. The max date has a filter context now. So for every row, the max date will be the date on that row context. In this case, it will be January 2018, February 2018. Uh, 18 etc etc so that's what I mean by row context now if you still are confused about how it works I actually covered it in a separate video uh, in the past so if you want to know more uh, and you kind of want to uh, wrap your head around it go check out that video so now let's go back to our original purpose here so I'm gonna just remove the max date here and we're gonna create a new measure now it doesn't matter where you create it we just create a new measure here We'll name this one um, three months sum. And we're going to create a calculate. Now we're going to use the dates in period as a filter context for our calculate. For now, we're going to use the expression sum because we want to sum the total views from our views table. And then we're going to use the dates in period in our filter context here. So we're going to do dates in period dates will be the same it will be the dates column from the calendar table the start dates will be the max of that date we will do minus three month that's it so if we hit enter we drag this into our table here and there you go so what it does is for each of these columns it will look through all these total views and it will add them all up and it will be sort of like a moving summary. So here, for example, if we go to March, we can do, uh, just to double check that the numbers are correct, we can do, 
Uh, let's see here, just to show it to you. Five seven two three three plus five zero one nine three one eight eight three. So that number there matches with our three month sum here in our column. And the same applies for every one of these rows. So for example, April, if we do the same thing, it's three, six, two, five, three, plus five, seven, two, three, three, plus five, zero, one, nine, three. So you'll see that matches with the three month sum here. So which just sums up April, March and February. So now that we have the three month sum, now we want to try and get the moving average from this uh, column, from this measure that we've created. And if you're not familiar with moving averages, it's essentially just a way to uh, create an average for however many months you want to look back in the past, which will give you a bit more of a balanced average as opposed to just a one month average, for example. And a moving average, an example would be a three month moving average where you would get the total average for the past three months. And in this case, this is what I want to show you today because we've already done half the work. We've summed up these um, three month values into uh, every single month here. And all we need to do is get the average from this number. And to get that number is pretty much just dividing it by the total number of months we are divide, I mean, we are comparing it to, which in this case is just three months. So a simple hack, I'm sure there's a better way to do it, is we're gonna wrap this to a divide. So we're gonna do a divide. We'll just divide this whole calculates function that we've created to three. And we will just name this one. Uh, three month moving average and there you go so the, now you have a three month moving average uh, for your total views in your Power BI report and just to verify that it works that the moving average works let's do the calculations together so let's look at March 2020 once again and let's add these all up again. So 5722233 plus 50193 plus 51883 divided by 3 and that matches with the number that we have here in our table. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to calculate something like moving averages using the dates in period DAX function. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.